If you're new here, I'm Lori from Muffs Merino and I'm an illustrator turned fiber artist. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a piece of um, pre-felt using merino wool. And what is pre-felt and what is it good for? So pre-felt is felt that hasn't been completely felted. It's only half felted. You can cut out shapes to make felt pictures. You can make fine hard edges for felt pictures. So things that you really want to pop out or stand out. You can also use the felt for making 3D felt where it's you could stand up and you make it, it raised off of the felt and that's kind of cool effect. So this is a sample of some pre-felt that I have made and attached to this project. And I'm going to show you how to do this in the next video. Another thing you can do with pre-felt is you can use it for making texture. You can make your pre-felt quite thick and then when you cut out your shapes, it will pop off the page and have just a nice kind of little bumpy texture. Sometimes what felt makers might do with that is they might embroider around it, making it pop even more off the page. And another thing you can do with pre-felt is you can use it under silk for different effects. If you want to add some raised texture, you can use it to make felt pictures and then put it underneath the silk. And that also has a pretty cool effect. So let's get started making our pre-felt. Pre-felt is very easy to make. It's pretty much the same as how to make a piece of felt but we will stop felting it after so many rolls. And so let's get started making our pre-felt. So today I'm a little bit more organized. I have a bucket to put my wet bubble wrap, just something you guys might also want to do. I have actually never done this before. I always, I'm a little bit disorganized and I just throw it to the side and it kind of starts dripping off the table. Um, and so <laughs> now that I've been doing these videos and I've been making more felt, I decided it would be handy just to get a little bit more organized. So I have that for putting my wet bubble wrap in when I'm not using it. And I also have another one to put my wool in so that it stays dry and off the table and off my work. So it doesn't stick to the work and it doesn't stick to everything else that I'm working on. So that's kind of a nice addition. So I'll just put that to the side. So I'm going to be using merino wool for this project. And I want my pre-felt to be this lovely pink color. It's all merino. This one has a little bit of silk in it. It's very pretty. Um, and I'm going to put it on top of the brown on both sides, just so that it's mostly all pink with that nice, lovely brown effect coming through the other side. If you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I love using dark brown or a dark gray with my felt. It just gives a beautiful, soft texture and really tones down the bright colors, making the felt look a little bit more natural. I'm going to make a six layer piece of pre-felt. So this would be a little bit thicker than a four layer piece of pre-felt. I think six layers is pretty good and it does make a nice sturdy pre-felt. If you're making felt pictures, you could just do four layers and that will be enough for the fiber you're using to not completely migrate through to the other side so that you'll see it. So four layers is enough to make pre-felt, but if you just want a little bit of texture and you want that pre-felt to bump off and have some thick texture or you're gonna embroider around it, you do wanna do a few more layers. And because merino wool is so fine, it does end up being thinner when it's completed. So I am going to do the six layers. So I'm going to lay out my felt as usual. I'm going to lay the wool out in perpendicular layers. And if you've never made a piece of felt before, you may just want to check out the how to make a piece of felt video because it will have more explanation and more thorough felt making tips. And um, I do go through the process a little bit more thoroughly than I might in this video. So just check that out if you've never made felt before. So I've done two crosshatch layers and now I'm just going to do two more. So I have laid my fiber vertical, then I've laid it horizontal. So now I'm going to lay my next color vertical. 
and laying the fiber out perpendicular with an even amount of layers will create a piece of felt that is shrunk evenly on in all directions. The only time you might not want your felt to shrink evenly in all directions is if you're making a really long scarf and you don't necessarily want it to shrink lengthwise too much, then it will be less work to complete your scarf. But there are circumstances where you may want your felt to shrink less in one direction or the other. Okay, so now I have laid out four layers, but I actually forgot to lay out my other side with the pink layer to make my six layers. And because I want the brown to be in the middle, I'm going to lay my pink layer underneath. Um, normally, like if you're making pre felt, you can just use the same color to make it easier if you're just learning how to felt. Use my, um, forgot to use my new bucket. Okay, so now I've laid my six layers out and I'm just going to wet my felt. Add some soap. Place my bubble wrap on top, bubble side down. And just make sure the felt becomes fully saturated. And you might notice in all my other videos, I really like to make my edges straight. So I like to fold them over. And the reason why I like my edges straight is simply because I just like to have a clean canvas. It's just easier for me to think and get creative ideas if I have a nice um, clean canvas to work from. A time is now or never. A time is now or never. Okay, so now that I've folded my edges over, I'm going to put my bubble wrap back on. And I'm gonna grab my pool noodle and I'm just gonna begin felting my project. You can also use a wooden dowel. And so I'm gonna lightly roll up my project without any pressure at all. And I'm just going to begin doing my rolls. I'm going to roll it on every side for at least 30 times. So that was 30 rolls and you don't want to apply any pressure at all when you're first starting to felt your piece of felt. You just want those fibers to migrate slowly into the felt. And so as we go in our rounds, we will apply a little bit more pressure every time. And so I like to turn my felt while it's rolled up, it's a little bit easier. And then I like to unroll it. And I'm just going to roll it back up from the other side. The reason why I roll it from top to bottom and then side to side is so that it shrinks more evenly. So I roll the bottom and then it felts from the bottom and then I roll from the top and then it felts from the top and then the side and then the side. And so it's more an even felt. But you can just if, you, if that's confusing or you forget where you are, you can just roll it in a clock. And if you forget where you are, felting is very forgiving and you can just keep rolling it in any direction. <laughs> just keep turning it and felting it until, <laughs> until the next part. Okay. So you want to straighten it out. It can get a little bit finicky at first, especially if it's a thick piece of felt. I can't say this is super thick, but it's... So it's quite easy to roll, but it does sort of start to crinkle a little bit. So you can just straighten things out. 
So I'm rolling it from four sides all together for this round. So just a few extra felting tips. If you're felting a really thick piece of felt and it's larger, you might want to use a pool noodle. And the reason why you might want to use a larger dowel is so that when you're rolling your thick felt, it doesn't crinkle so easily. If you were to roll a felted slipper, for example, or a thick felted handbag using a small dowel, when you fold it, it may just start to crease all the way down. And so I like to start with a thicker, a thicker dowel for thicker felt. And then as my felt begins to shrink, I might change over to a smaller dowel. So something else I do to felt my piece a little bit more quickly, but gently, is I actually get rid of my dowel and I begin felting the piece just in the bubble wrap on its own. And again, this is no pressure, but because there's no dowel, the felt has a little bit more room and tightness to start felting a little bit more quickly. So I have completed round two and I have rolled my piece of felt approximately 30 times on each side. So that is 240 rolls so far. And now my piece is starting to felt and begin felting it right on my towel. When I felt it on my towel, the towel needs to be wet because the felt needs to re retain the water. So if you begin felting on your towel and it's dry, all the all the water in your piece of felt is going to go into the towel and your felt's going to become dry and it will not felt. So I'm going to begin rolling my felt for another round, but I'm not going to press, I'm not going to apply much pressure still because the tight roll is enough on its own. So I've done about 30 rolls and I'm just going to turn it around. I'm going to also flip it so I roll it on the other side. This part isn't super important. You don't really need to fold it, but it might help get out some of those crinkles. I like to give it a little bit of a stretch, but not too much because it hasn't felted a whole lot. I just realized that I might be missing the fiber fest. It's Friday today. And we have these beautiful gardens called the Hamilton Gardens. And every year there's a fiber festival. What couldn't be better than going to visit beautiful gardens and buying yarn and roving from fiber artisans across New Zealand, all gathered in one place. So I hope I'm not missing it. I, I'm not very good yet at attending events. I always forget. But I wanted to make a point to visit this event. So I'm definitely going to have to check out the dates. And hopefully it's more than one so I can actually go. So I'm just going to roll my piece of felt from the corners a little bit. That'll just help bring my corner edges in so they're not so wonky. And I'm very impressed with this piece of felt so far. It's actually keeping its shape quite nice. But I'm going to cut it up so it doesn't really matter this time. So you don't want to felt your piece too much. You don't want to over felt it. You don't want to felt it to the point where it's not going to stick to anything. And so I'm going to stop rolling my felt now. So three rounds, 30 times on each side, and that will make your pre-felt, especially for merino wool. Now, I haven't really made pre-felt with Corydell, and I have a feeling it could just be a little less time. So this, this piece now, I can pick it up. It's not going to fall apart, and I feel like this is a really good piece of pre-felt because I'm going to be able to cut shapes in it quite easily. I normally cut my pre-felt right away after I make it because it's easier to cut the shapes out of the pre-felt when it's wet. You don't have to make pre-felt. You can buy pre-felt that's already made online, and this pre-felt is so nice. In fact, I prefer this pre-felt because it's made on a machine with needles, and it's a little bit more of an even pre-felt, and when it shrinks on your project for whatever purposes you're using it for, it seems to shrink a little bit more evenly and maybe the edges are a little bit more defined than the felt that I make at home. So they're just gonna create like a kind of a softer look and like a little bit more of a, a nice firm edge. And so with this, sometimes the fibers, because they've been brushed, well, I actually have some carded fiber in here as well that's not brushed. And so that will help. So now we have completed our piece of felt and that's it guys, that's it for this video and that's it for making our pre-felt. 
and I'm going to put it aside for the next video where I'm going to cut the pieces out and I'm going to attach them to a little sample just to show you how to make raised pre-felt and also I'm going to cut some pieces out to make a felt picture and then I might embroider I, I might even do a little bit of embroidery. I hope you liked this video and if you did just press like and subscribe for more and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.